Welcome to the Audio Description Narrators of America Know Your Narrator series. Today, we have Laura Post with us. Thanks for joining us, Laura. Thanks for having me. So good to have you. <laughs> we would love to jump right in and ask you, what do you love about audio description narration? I, well, I love that it brings accessibility to my favorite thing in the world, which is movies and TV shows, uh, to more people out there. So that's my favorite thing about it. But my favorite thing about um, narrating it is just, it's just such an interesting exercise. Uh, it's it's a totally different art form than audiobooks or commercials or video games or anything else. It's its own special skill set that's just really interesting and fun to work in. Have you brought anything else from your other voiceover experience? Because your your experience in voiceover is has run the gamut. It's a it's a whole world in itself. It, has anything from those experiences uh, specifically fed into audio description, or is it totally unique? Um. A little bit of promo stuff sometimes comes into play, um, depending. So, like, I've done, um, I've narrated for Carpool Karaoke, and sometimes they have us do the the actual, like, ads that they run for Carpool Karaoke. They're really short, and it's very similar to doing promo work because you're essentially reading the text on screen, which is, you know, like, this week, this happens, and this happens. <laughs> Carpool Karaoke, you know. Gotcha. Um, so that's interesting. And then sometimes when um, dubbing uh, shows that have lots of subtitles, uh, I've been brought in to be like half a dozen different characters. So that's much more like doing it's it's still kind of a a its own unique skill set. But uh, I get to bring in a little of my animation and character training and when I'm playing actual characters. Very cool. As far as the, the narrator goes, is, there, is that considered a character or are you just being yourself, just talking words? Is there, is there anything that you bring to that? Oh, as far as being a narrator goes, um, yeah, no, there's definitely, it's not just like how I am talking with you right now because you want to match the tone of the project that you're working on and really help provide an immersive experience for the listener so that they are ideally getting the exact same experience as a sighted viewer. Very cool. Is it, um, and that, that kind of bridging the gap, I guess, with, um, with a, a sighted audience member and a blind or low vision audience member that uh, you said immersion. Is there something about the, is there something about the performance uh, as far as that emotional experience that you want to give them that, that you find uh, it, We've had some other uh, narrators say that, you know, it's it's kind of like a tight wire act. Would you, would you agree with that or would you have your own take on that? I would 100% agree with that. It's uh, I remember in my very, very, very first session when I hadn't done anything before, um, I started out and the, di the director was like, you have to pull back a lot. You're in you're in audiobook world and you're like painting a beautiful picture and everything, but you need to reel that back quite a bit. And I had to go through that very opening description like two or three times before I finally got it to a place where it was the right level of invested, but not too, you know, flowery and over the top with, you know, enthusiasm and excitement. Cause I was very excited to be doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you don't want to detract from what's happening in the movie. You don't want to take the shine away from the project itself. You know, you want to just sort of seamlessly fit into the soundtrack ideally very cool and once you had that locked in once you found that lack of detraction that, that immersive <laughs> experience was there uh were there any other challenges uh, specifically that you that you overcame with audio description narration itself oddly enough doing um subtitles was a new challenge because again you wanted to act the part you don't want to be like if someone's shouting in the scene and you can obviously hear the person shouting, you don't want to just be like, how could you do that? That was terrible of you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you don't want to be shouting over the actor. So you mm -hmm. sort of had to find that middle ground again. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a real, like you said, sort of a, a tight wire act <laughs> trying to juggle everything and walk that very fine line between immersion and and not distracting <laughs> gotcha 
Very cool. Where would you like um, audio description to go, whether just audio description itself or maybe even audio description narration? Um, I would like to just see more coverage of audio description, like more things audio described in general. Uh, I think that video games is a sort of new frontier for that. I know that or uh, I know the recent Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer had audio description, which was like so incredibly cool, <laughs> but it, I wasn't a part of it, but I think it's awesome that, that it happened. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that's just a great form of inclusivity, especially, you know, there's so many games that are narration heavy and they don't have voiceover. Um, I'm, I've been Twitch streaming lately, uh, mm-hmm. a couple games that, don't have either they don't have voiceover or they don't have complete voiceover and I've been doing voices and I have audience members that are like that's so cool that you're doing this because it's providing the experience for us so that's neat yeah Uh, but yeah it would be great if that was just included (laughs) (laughs) yes yes it seems like the game itself yeah Mm -hmm. it seems like there are steps that are being taken even like the tiniest little incidental steps sure do seem like even though they're taking a lot longer than we want them to, I'm a very impatient person, that it's, it is going in the right direction in a lot of ways. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that it's, it's really getting a lot uh, more traction, uh, especially like with the internet and everything. People are realizing this is a thing that people not only want, but need, and it should be provided. Another thing I'd like to see is more descriptive audio for, for foreign content, anime specifically. Um, if you, I, I've met fans of anime before that they're like, I am not able to watch anime really because I need it described and they don't do it. They'll dub it and that's great. And that's half of the way there, but (laughs) you know, there's no, the, whoever's doing the dubs, they don't do the descriptive audio tracks. And I know that there's a whole slew of legal things and hurdles to jump through to get that track made, Mm -hmm. but I think it would be great if we could start providing those as well. Oh, very excited. And it seems like even with audio description, it's beyond just TV shows and movies that, you know, whether it's live productions that are now even online available, especially during this pandemic or yeah. uh, museum exhibits that what you're talking about with anime sounds like a, a really great opportunity now that people want to have more access to. 100%. What's your experience with audiences as far as audiences who use audio description or have maybe opinions about it? Has that informed your your performance at all or influenced you at all? I try really hard to, like when you're doing that that tightrope act, Mm -hmm. uh, I try to lean away from being too flat. Like if I'm not sure, you know, when you're trying to walk that line, I try to lean away from being too flat because I just know that a lot of audience members would prefer more enthusiasm over too flat. And I know that I also sometimes listen to descriptive audio um, because I'm busy and can't always just sit down and watch TV. So sometimes if I'm in my car or I'm cleaning the house or something, I will put something on that I want to watch, put on the uh, audio description track. And so I'm also an audience member and, you know, I'm like, hmm, I, I start to learn the things that I like and don't like out of a, you know, out of a narrator. And uh, so, yeah, it's definitely had influence on how I approach scripts when I get them and um, how I perform when given those scripts. <laughs> how have, uh, uh, have, do you know any other cited people that, that use audio description in a similar way or is it, is it just you that? Um, I know that my, my mom's used it before for shows that she's afraid might be too graphic. <laughs> so it's, uh-huh. it's one thing to hear it described. It's another thing to watch it, which I totally, I've also actually done that on occasion with a couple shows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, I think we're the only two I know that are cited, but use it because it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. Nice option to have. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, there was a, a Stephen King movie that came out and I was too scared to see the movie. So I'm like, oh, I'll just read the book. That'll be easier. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> no, I would imagine not. <laughs> it, was rough. it was pretty rough and I couldn't put it down. <laughs> well, <laughs> these are such great answers. We're just, it's just, we're flying through so many things here. Uh, <laughs> as far as your performances go, 
with uh, with audio description. Can you share a little bit maybe about what's is is there something that's going through your mind, something that you're focused on, maybe an intention, or do you find yourself with that juggle that you just you yourself immerse yourself and just because you're the level of experience that you've had doing this, that it just becomes like a, a part of you. I'd imagine, uh, I, I guess I'm asking, are you a, a ballet dancer that's just rehearsed it so many times that it just comes naturally? Or is there certain things that you're putting into it as you're doing it? If that's even a question that I can ask, I don't know. Uh, I feel like at this point in my career um, <laughs> that I have practiced it enough that it is almost like a muscle memory sort of falling into the the rhythm of it. But I mean, it's, it's a, like you said, it, it took years of training and practice and doing it to sort of get to a point where I can start a movie and kind of know what tone it's going to have, even when I'm like the movie title is something really vague <laughs> and you're yeah. like, I don't know what this movie's going to be. And you can see that first opening logo of, you know, let, let's say it's like the universal logo and you can sometimes hear just that little bit of music under it and you mm. get a feel for what the tone of the movie is going to be. So you don't have to necessarily go back and be like, this was a comedy and I was reading it like a horror movie. I need to go back and do those first 10 lines. Um <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I feel like it, it's sort of a, much like doing commercials or promos, you sort of start to, it's like learning a different style of music. And so eventually you kind of get the, get the rhythm, but even within, in, within descriptive audio, um, you still do make adjustments for, oh, I'm doing a comedy, I'm doing a horror, I'm doing an action film, I'm doing a kid's movie. Is there uh, any collaboration that you can share with as far as other people that you work with, whether it's the, the writers of the audio description or do you write the script and perform it? Uh, oh, no, I've never written. Um, oh, you haven't? Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for the writers because honestly, without them, it's, it, they, I, they're responsible for at least 75% of the quality, in my opinion. Um, I did training so that I know what goes into a script uh, just because at least one of the companies that I worked at thought it was important for all their actors to be trained on how to write for it so that we uh, could, if we needed to do like quality control while we're working and we knew like, Oh, this isn't going to work. This, you know, stepped on an important line of dialogue or something like that, or this is making assumptions for the audience, uh, which was great. I absolutely adored getting to get that training. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really helped me as a talent. No, how again you know to provide the best experience for the audience um but i have never actually written myself no <laughs> gotcha. but it definitely sounds like it informs your performance and it helps like you said with the bottom the bottom line the the end goal of supporting our audiences to give them the most immersive experience this is just one more element to it and it's it's mm -hmm. great to know how important that that writing is that as incredibly oh, yeah. talented as you are, if you're given a, a script, that's, that's uh, not that you've ever been given a script that's subpar, but if you were given something <laughs> that didn't match the, the intent of, of what was happening visually that, that, you know, you, you could, <laughs> there's so many expressions that are going through my head right now, but you could only do so much with that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if, if you're, if you have a script, for example, that's just, very overwritten it's hard to provide the ideal experience if you're trying to rush through and cram too many words into not enough space you know that's mm. where the right one of the key easy to explain places <laughs> where a writer's skill is really really important and like why they're they're so important to providing the best experience because honestly like i'm not a writer i would never be able to come up with some of the really excellent ways that you know the the on-screen visuals are being described Sometimes, you know, like when they're describing landscapes or cities or things like that, I'm like, oh, wow, I'd be like a city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, a, I'm not I'm not equipped for that skill set. But um, yeah, they're they're so important in the mix. Uh, I know um, a couple writers personally. Uh, Justin Soul is fantastic. And he did the writing for uh, you on Netflix, which I was the narrator for. Mm. Um, he's, he's awesome. And then I know a couple other fellow narrators like you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, 
know too many. Um, most of the work I do, I don't do any longer with a director and an engineer there. So I don't really have directors that I'm like, oh, yeah, they're great. Um, well, what about the, the companies? Awesome. The fact that you've been with some companies that have required you to, to take training in writing sounds like they are genuinely caring. They're not just ticking a oh, box on accessibility here. Oh, yeah. No, uh, that was deluxe. And they are incredible, and I love working with them. Um, I'd say 95% of my audio description work has been with Deluxe mm -hmm. over the past 10 or so years. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing that you think that they're bringing to the audiences that, um, that really is, I mean, obviously the, the requirement for the, the narrators. What, what else uh, are they doing that, that, supports our that supports our audience? I know that they as a company and as a department they they really are like listening to feedback and trying to incorporate and improve the experience constantly i know when i first was brought on one of the reasons that they had us do the writing seminar is because they were going to conventions and seminars and things to learn you know the the proper way to do it and the way to get it done to get the ideal outcome so um yeah they're just they're really passionate there and i think it's fantastic and they also put a lot of thought into their casting they don't just go oh yeah like we work with laura all the time she can just do this movie it'll be fine you know they, they really think about whose Even voice that's would... true but okay sorry. i mean <laughs> thank you but um, they actually put a lot of thought into whose voice would best fit mm. the the film or tv show and also wouldn't you know sound too much like a character in the show because that's always like a problem to you or something you have to think about at least mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, they, they put a lot of thought into their production. They definitely don't just go, oh, check. We got it. We did it. <laughs> mm. Is there, it sounds like with all the work that the vendors are doing, the vendors, the, the providers of audio description, uh, it's a team effort, whether it's the, the narrator and the skills that you've brought or the, the really intricate and thought out writing for the, the audio description writers, or even the casting of who's choosing to do what and, and the companies that are listening to the audience, that there's a lot of different elements that are involved in the creation of audio description. It's not just one person doing the whole thing and calling it a day. When you think about all the audience's experiences with audio description, is there something in your experience in any of your projects that uh, that maybe you could share with someone. It's like, here's another example of something that, that's really above and beyond that shows uh, the care and the quality that's going into this work. Um, hmm, that, is, that is a tough question. It's loaded. It's such yeah, a, exactly. it was a, a five-minute question. <laughs> um, hmm. Like you said, I mean, it's just there's, there's so many people that are, because you've got, the production coordinators, the writers, the talent, the engineers, and the QCers. I'm like you said, there's it's a group effort to to get something to come out and be of the quality it is. And it's not just, oh yeah, you know, I just get sent a movie and then I sit in my basement and I just record it real quick and you know I just sort of make up the lines as I go because that definitely would not be anywhere near the kind of quality that anyone would appreciate. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of like a good example. I know hmm, it's hard because it's like going through, you know, a decade's worth of projects and going, <laughs> sure. what's a good example of, well, how about this? Of, Maybe you know, something, some experience you had recently where, uh, either during the experience or after the recording of it, you thought, oh, wow, that's, they really did above and beyond. I felt like uh, I did the description, uh, the description for for Wonder Woman, the you know the the Gal Gadot one that came out whenever it came out a couple years mm -hmm. ago now, um, and I felt really like first just sort of honored to get to do that movie because it's the first Wonder Woman movie finally. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But also, uh, they they put a lot of attention and thought uh, into how the script was written and making sure that we hit all the action because that was an action heavy movie and we hit all the action beats. And uh, I know that a lot a lot went into that film. 
I also know, even though I'm no part of it, uh, I know that a lot has gone into the description of the new Star Wars movies. Mm. They, they really, those are some real quality. And that's, that's on the part of not just Deluxe, but also Disney, like really wanting to be able to provide that experience. Oh, it's so great to hear. And obviously our audiences are enjoying it. The, uh, you know, as you've seen it either on social media or any of your, uh, inter- engagements with the audience, mm-hmm. the, they are definitely having the conversation beyond just, does it have it or not? That's a very yeah. important conversation and that's not it something is, to be yeah. dismissed, but what we're talking now, it really is delving into, okay, we want it on, you know, sighted people, if it's ready for sighted people, it can be ready for, for blind and low vision people. If it's got uh, an immersive experience with the narrator, as you provide, that's an important element too. And the writing and the, and the mix, there's so many elements. Oh yeah. I guess that's more of a statement. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and it's great. I, I think it's excellent that it's not only that, like you said, you know, we uh, are coming out when things are new and coming out, they're coming out with, audio description. I also love that companies are going back onto old titles that are available on streaming or various services now and giving those uh, tracks that may not have had them in the past or have had tracks but were lost to time um, so that they can stay available in our age of binge watching and streaming and things like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audiences about audio description narration? We've covered so much and so effectively. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all your writing contributions in that in that class that you took for audio description is now coming full throttle in this oh, entire I guess so. interview. <laughs> um, uh, nothing, nothing leaps to mind. Um, How can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Laura Post Voice. That's my Twitter. And if you're interested in my Twitch streams, my Twitch is also Laura Post Voice. So it's pretty easy to find me. If it's Laura Post Voice, chances are it's me. (laughs) No guarantees, but chances are it's me. Um, So, yeah. Oh, great. Thanks so much for being a part of this, Laura. It's been great to speak with you about your contributions to our audiences and how you're approaching it. And thank you for spending the time with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.